Welcome to the Mealing Racing YouTube channel. Hi, my name is Garrett Mealing. I'm with uh, Mealing Racing. Pretty big team, pretty much just me. Um, today I'm going to show you how to check bump steer without buying an expensive gauge with just some household stuff that you probably have lying around. Um, I'm going to do it on the uh, DSM Time Attack car here. It's kind of a bit of a storage piece at the moment because I don't have enough room in my garage for everything. But uh, we'll check this front left. I've already put a bump steer kit in it to mostly correct the bump steer that I had. Uh, it's not perfect, but it used to have almost a quarter inch of bump steer from full droop to full bump, which isn't really realistic because your suspension doesn't usually do that. But um, with the new bump steer kit, that I got from uh, Bobby Gold, this one right here. It uh, you can space things out and get your geometry a little bit better. The geometry in the front of my car is far from perfect. I wish it was better. I'm gonna have to change quite a few things I think to try and bring that back into spec to where it should be. But. Uh, We'll get into this here and I'll show you what uh, what you can do to check bump steer and a couple things you can do to correct it. So, this is my homemade bump steer gauge. All it is is a laser pointer. You attach uh, this to the wheel with some zip ties. Make some sort of perpendicular piece and then you bounce the laser off of a mirror. Yeah, Corvette. And uh, then you cycle your suspension through its range. Um, it's particularly easy right now because I have the front strut out. But uh, you don't have to do that because you can move it through the, the usable range even with the strut in there. It's just a little tougher. I'm going to get this hooked up here. and set the laser and it doesn't have to be a laser level like this one you could just use a laser pointer this laser level is a little bit easier because uh, easier to keep it straight could use a slightly longer zip tie DSM, you think I'd be a pro zip tie by now? Okay, so now you get that. You turn that on and then adjust it so your laser kind of hits in the middle of this piece of paper. See, it's hitting right there right now. So we'll just adjust our mirror. Hit about in the middle. And then if I can find a pen in my drunk drawer. Ooh. We'll make a mark. Try and show this here. And that's that's at full droop right now. Which isn't really realistic because uh, the, sh the strut won't let it droop that far, but we'll do it there anyway. Hang on, I'm gonna find a jack. Okay, so I've ran the suspension through its usable range, about four inches maybe. It, uh, it probably won't move as much as you think because I've got pretty stiff springs in here. I'm running uh, 700 pound per inch in the front. And I should probably be stiffer than that, but my shocks won't take it with the valving right now, so that's another story. But uh, I ran it through its paces, kind of marked out where the um, laser is pointing and done a few calculations, and I'll show you that here now. So our laser points at the mirror. 
bounces back, hits the paper. Right now I've got the wheel stepped up in the fender well, about at max bump. Um, if it ever actually went to there, as you can see, my arrow would probably just about be touching the ground. So this is probably a pretty extreme case. Um, what you do is, is you measure your distance from the laser to the mirror and back to the paper and you divide that by the radius of your wheel which in my case is 143 inches and the wheel radius is 12 and a half it's a 25 inch tire so that gives you 11.44 and what that means is is that your difference between center here this was where the wheel was at ride height and your bump you divide that number by 11.44 so this is an inch and a quarter which gives me 98 thou of bump steer on compression and then I'll try and stand in the way of the light and see the laser better if I let the wheel down through its stroke you can see it's going to move in to the ride height there's your ride height right there in line with the ride height line sitting nice in the fender well so we'll call that zero and then you're going to drop her down to full droop you can see it tracks pretty nicely here and there it is suspensions drop down and it just toes in a tiny bit, a quarter of an inch, which when you divide it by 11.44 gives you 20 thou of toe in. So in this instance, my, my tie rod's pretty much at the right height, but it's too long now. Um, and I don't really have a way to adjust that. So I'll explain kind of what the changes are you could make here. Okay, so when you're looking at your bump steer, if uh, compression travel toes out and extension toes in, then your tie rod's too high. So you need to lower your tie rod end. And if compression toes in and extension toes out, which is the problem I had, your outer tie rod end is too low. So when I did that, when I changed into Bobby's new tie rod ends, this is for the other side here, I've got a spacer in here that lifts the tie rod, the outer tie rod end. So that's what got me quite a bit closer than I was. And then if compression travel toes out and extension toes out, the tie rod's too short, or if it toes in and toes in, which is what I've got here, both ways are towing in, then the tie rod is too long. So I actually don't know how you adjust your tie rod length but I imagine it probably means you've got to change some stuff in your suspension but uh, for me right now I went from you know now I've got about a tenth of an inch of a little over a tenth of an inch of total bump steer I used to have almost a quarter inch so I'm quite a bit better the car should feel a lot better especially when the arrow loaded up on straights and it started to started to tow in the car was just awful it fought me the whole way down the straights and it was not confidence inspiring so that's what i was dealing with last year but i'm hoping that with less than half the bump steer the car should feel a lot more stable and i'll continue to try and find a way to uh, make it better but for now this is a big improvement and uh, i'll do the other side and it should be pretty good just to give you a comparison here so this is obviously the Bobby Gold kit and you probably, most people won't need a spacer this big. This is pretty excessive due to my tubular front subframe that the geometry is less than good on. But uh, they're almost identical length so it's kind of nice because you pretty much just mark your old tie rod end and put it in and when you go to get it aligned it'll be, it'll be really close. But you also want to do this kind of after you've got most of your other settings right because camber and all that will affect your tie rod length as well and uh, if you do that then you'll probably mess up your everything you did trying to find the uh,
correct spacer to get your toe and bump steer in in check. So anyways, that's how you check bump steer without spending a whole bunch of money on a gauge. I think it works pretty good and uh, I hope that helped you out. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you watched this, obviously helped you out. If you got to this point, hit like, hit subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything else that uh, you'd like to see me do videos on. Thanks for watching.